Nick Morning. Jonas, welcome hey. to the show. Hello. How are you? She's making out with Morning. Rob Shooter, now making out with Bethany, <laughs> making out with the world. This is so fantastic. With everybody. Well, thank you again for being here. Of course. Thanks for uh, having me. What do you need? Do you need something to drink? Do you need no, some I'm, edibles? I'm, I'm, you want some edibles? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm God. going to Colorado in two weeks. I can pick you up some stuff. Okay, like, whatever yeah. you need. <laughs> <laughs> My gosh. Here's a picture of Nick. How funny is that picture? Walking around with his, uh, the day after he did an edible lollipop, and Ooh. you had a narb. A narb. Narb? A narb. narb. Explain to the Brit what a narb is. Have, have you heard of this before? A narb? Well, we call it something else. Okay. What do you call it? Uh, a hard on. <laughs> No, but it's it's more complicated than that. It's not just a hard on. It's we call it tired wood. Tired wood. If you're like if you're really sleepy and tired, it's sometimes <laughs> you ever get tired wood. I just learned yeah. about this by the way last I, week. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. tell yeah. Bethany. So all, all men deal with this. No, wait, I want you to look Bethany in the eye while you're describing this. <laughs> uh, okay. No. I'm not gonna, all men deal with this, and it, a narb is a no apparent reason boner. Oh. Okay. Uh oh. Good. It just happened, and you're like, what, what is that doing there? Does this happen <laughs> often to you? No, 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 not often. It's not happening but now, the, is the it? the reason this is so funny is because this was a red carpet event, and I also, the the other part of the story is that I had um, this, you know, edible that was still in my system. Yeah. And I... You gotta be careful with those, man. Mess. Oh, it was horrible. I was a mess. It was really bad. This was like a year and a half ago, though, so I've come a long way. Oh, I, yeah. Because okay. I was, my boyfriend and I, we went out with some friends one night, and he ate an entire chocolate bar. Oh. And the next, th that night, I'm trying, I said, just pass out. Go to sleep. <laughs> I can't because the bullets are flying above my head, and I've got to go to the bathroom. I mean, uh, stop it. You're yeah. supposed to eat a little. Oh, God. Well, anyway, back to the music. Uh, so much to talk to you about. Um, some of it happy, some of it sad. Let, let, just, let's talk about the tragedy going on in the world right now. But yeah. how does how do you apply that to music? Let's say, let, let's say uh, you 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 become very very involved in the storytelling about what happened in Orlando or with uh, oh Christina Grimmie. Good God! Yeah, yeah. Now, when you go out on stage that night or perform, does it change you? I mean, does does the emotion of the day change the way you perform and think of your music as a whole? Is that Absolutely. a weird question? No, no, you're you're right on the money. I mean, I, I think that we're all affected by these tragic events in some way, um, whether it's directly affected or, you know, uh, just emotionally it affects everybody because it is so horrible. And um, I think as a performer, you know, there, there's two sides to it. The, the one job that you have is to go out and bring some joy, if you can, to people. And um, music for so long has been an escape from, you know, the world that is so horrible at times. Uh, but also recognizing um, that, you know, you have a platform to be able to speak out and, and hopefully see some kind of change um, and, and know that, you know, uh, it's, a, it's a long road, but um, music has been on the forefront of that for a long time, so hopefully it can continue. Um, but I, I feel like, you know, it's just, it's just so sad. <laughs> the, the reality is... We've so been awesome. hit over the head a lot, especially... Yeah. If you live in Orlando, yeah. yeah. I mean, I saw the I saw your Snapchat uh, from London, I believe. You were you were commenting on the uh, passing of Christina Grimmie. Yeah, and uh, you, I, I could see it in your eyes and in the Snapchat. I think we have sound. We don't have to play the sound, but I'm just thinking. You know, how many times have you had that you can recall that the show must go on mentality when you're backstage because you've done so many shows. Yeah, there've got to be some where you're just like, oh God. Okay, I mean, do you go to a place in your head? Or how do you how do you ramp it up to get out there and, and make people happy and do what you got to do? Um, I, I think that we we all need that escape. We need to to find a way to to feel some joy in moments of. of do you feel of like you escape process. when you're actually performing? I think I do. I feel very free when I'm performing, and and I get kind of lost. And I mean, you walked in when we were sound checking, and I was just out there jamming with my guitar player uh, because that's my sort of my best time of the day. It's just to be able to create and vibe out and um, hopefully I can bring that to whoever I'm in front of and, and take that as a, a responsibility and an honor to be able to hopefully entertain in moments of, of uh, real tragedy. Last night, uh, a vigil going on uh, in the village here yeah. in New York City. I met up with Bethany and our producer Sam. Uh, the mayor was there, the governor was there, and then I didn't know you were there. Um, ladies and gentlemen, Nick Jonas. I'm like, uh, what? What? And so yeah. I just want to play the beginning of this because it really is a positive, wonderful message. Do you have that? Yes. Okay, just hit the play here. We go. My father, a minister from New Jersey, shaped my view that love is love. And we are all equal. No matter who you are, where you're from, or where you're going in your life, you have the right to love and to be loved. That we are powerful and we can make a change. And I'm no politician. I have a humble and small voice. 
But when you look out and you see the faces here, you know that if we all raise our small voices, we can do a lot of good. Yeah. And we do need to see change. Well, I would vote for you. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I'm a weak, small voice. I'm not a politician. Uh, yeah. You sounded great, but what was, you said about was, your father was really, really cool. My father's an amazing man. Um, you've had the chance to meet him before. Yeah, absolutely. Times. Yeah, uh, But it's true. And, and, you know, that was just such an unbelievable evening to be a part of. I, I'm in the middle of album release week, and there's a lot of things going on. Um, but I looked at my team when I heard the vigil was happening and said, I'd love to be a part of this in any way I can. The LGBT community has been so supportive of me and, and anything I can do to support. And, and they asked me to go up and speak. I didn't prepare anything. I just kind of walked up and... And spoke. Wait, hold heart. on. You're that, that eloquent that was naturally. Your heart? That was. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't know what I was going to say when oh I walked in. L- listen to us. You have a heart. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? Um, what? You but mean? You mean those things? It, it, you know, I cannot it imagine was the the pain that the families of the victims uh, feel, and um, you know, I, I I humbly say that I'm here to support any way I can, and, and I'm I'm so so sorry for them. You know, and it's it's. Uh, it's, it's incredible to look out, and I was trying to describe it to a friend last night, but you look out and you see those faces, and you see the passion, and uh, it's directed, I think, at a, a, a real bravery that this area shows every time tragedy hits, yep. which is, I think, the, my favorite thing about New York and New Jersey and Long Island. You know, it's a, it's a beautiful place where people, um, in times of real tragedy, speak up. And, and know how to make a difference and make a change. And I just think it's so important that if you have that voice and people are paying attention, you might as well give them a good message or two, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's... I love that. I, I, I don't think, like, like I said there, I'm, I'm not a politician. I don't, I don't think I can make tons of change myself, but I, I'm, I'm grateful to have a platform to be able to speak about things I'm passionate about and, um, you know, humbled and honored last night to have been able to be a part of it in any way. Uh, and and um, all I can say is that... Uh, I, I do intend on doing all I can to see a change, and, and you know, I'm proud to be an American. I think we all should be. I'm still proud to be an American. How's Demi Lovato doing? She's great. Love Demi her. Demi is the best. Um, and she and I are, are about to start tour rehearsals. Um, so I'm here this week in New York, and then uh, I'm going to take a few days uh, of vacation. This, no, this not allowed. This thing that I've, I've been hearing about. I'm uh, <laughs> going to go do that, and then uh, we're going to start tour rehearsals down in uh, Florida. Now I asked you. So I asked you last time you were in. I asked you if you and Demi were going to be wearing matching costumes, and you said no. And I want to ask a follow-up question and see if you've changed your mind on that at all. Um, (laughs) We we have not changed our minds. Um, uh, You know, I I think the individual spirit is is key in this show. Uh huh. uh -huh. Um, Demi and I are very different people, although Uh you know we're very good friends. But. Um, I don't know if, if she would really love some of the stuff that I'm wearing. I don't know. I, I think don't... you should rethink that. There's something else I just have to bring up. And I, I want to find out your perspective because this has become such a huge movement in America. Go ahead and hit that. Carpool I'm karaoke. Ready to oh, yeah. Yeah. So there you are with Demi yeah. and a James Carden. I mean, it's, what's it like from that point of view in the car with him? It's so because... hot in the car. Oh, the hell, and how long did it no take to get that? This. Okay, this is the tell thing tell no us everything you know about so, this. So I'll give you the whole scoop. Give us but the, basically, the scoop. You know, because they're recording sound, they can't have the AC on. And at that point in the year, which was like a month and a half ago, it's really hot in LA. So for some reason, I decided to wear like this jacket with another <laughs> thing on top of it. The whole thing. And I'm just sweating in the car. <laughs> and Demi keeps looking back at me. She's like, what's the matter with you? I'm, like, I'm fine. I'm fine. Uh, but also, you know, you want to make sure you know the words to Demi's song. Oh, yes. She knows the words to my song. So we're like, and he knows the word. You know, so it's a very, uh, it's an interesting thing. But the other part of it is that it is uh, one of the most fun shows I've done ever. Isn't that great? And, and you see why best. it's become so huge. Oh, yeah. It's great to see people you, you admire, that you like their music, whatever, up there kind of making a fool of themselves, having fun. He says before you start shooting, too, he's like, don't try to sing, like, you know, funny. He's like, really go for it. Act like you're playing the guard. He means business. Yeah, he's all about it. And he, he was kind enough. He came up and uh, presented me this week with a, with a, an award at the Songwriters Hall of Fame. And had some really nice words to say, as, far, as well as some jokes about purity rings and other things. There is that. <laughs> you, you just can't shake that, can you? I had to walk. I said the first thing I said because he was like, you know, I don't remember what he was saying, but um, it was it was a purity ring joke. And I said, James, you know, I can't wait to uh, play you the songs I've written about sex. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> and watching it back, I was like, that's probably a strange thing to say. To <laughs> it's a little odd. Right. Do you still have the ring at home in a box? I, I don't know where the ring is. I'm not sure. Should be in the Smithsonian. <laughs> <laughs> Should be. That's funny. You know, uh, speaking of James Corden, of course, uh, the Tonys of the night, you were 
You seem to seem you seem very comfortable on stage in a production setting, in a like a Broadway show setting. Was is that something you would ever consider tripping back into? Did you love it yeah. that much? I loved it. I mean, I, and I still love it. I have so much love for for musical theater and the Broadway community. I'm so excited that um, Broadway as a whole is doing well. Oh yeah, you know it's it's pretty amazing to see. Um, and so I yes, I would love to come back. I'd love to write something of my own and and be in the show. Okay. Um. So we'll see if that that comes together. But that's a dream. Well, look. Uh, last year was complicated. Out, of course, doing very well. The new single is Chainsaw, and he just did uh, close for us a few minutes ago. You can see that on the replay channel at ElvisDuran.com. Nick Jonas, always a pleasure to have you here. Always. Thank you for having me. And uh, wait, is it good to be had? It's good to be had. Okay, good. Nick Jonas, <laughs> thanks for coming in today. Thank you.